Good morning, church. Good morning. Oh, wonderful. That was so joyous and filled with good news just on the greeting this morning. Thank you so much. We are entering into a season, and each season has its busyness, but this one especially feels particularly full and things that you might want to participate in as well. Today we will be collecting our sensibility mission offering, so if you have change at the bottom of your purse, you can put those in the baskets Andrea set out for us, or if you want to give in the offering plate, just make sure it's labeled in some way that we know that the money that that is collected for through these efforts supports our local mission partner, Care to Share. Beaverton School District has a clothes for kids closet that needs your help to share free, gently new and used clothing with students. We have an available 10 slots for Thursday, November 14th from 1 to 3 p.m. Now you may say, November, that's so far away. Why are you telling us about this now? And that is because the school district needs a completed background check for all volunteers and it can take a little while to be processed. So if you need help getting connected to that, please see Leslie. It only takes a few minutes and then you're done for the whole school year. The blood drive will take place on September 25th from 1.30 to 6.30 in the youth house. The Friday E! News has a link you can follow or you can contact Allison Carlson or Shirley Anderson and they will sign you up. It's a third Thursday this week, which means Valley will be out in the back parking lot from 10 to 11.30 collecting non-perishable items for St. Matthew's Food Pantry and rigid styrofoam to be sent to Green Century for safe disposable. I have heard that these are separate, they are not together, so food will be not, won't be mixed with styrofoam. They will remain in separate places. But thank you for doing this double collection, these efforts, um, and for helping us spread the word and sharing this news with our community. With all of these things, let us come with our whole being to worship God this morning. Good morning. Please stand and join me in the call to worship as found in your bulletins or on your screen. We have been gathered in this place for this time that we might hear the good news we can't help but share. On this day and each one to come, may the words of our mouths, the meditations of our hearts, and the actions of our lives proclaim our faith.
be seated. Please join me in prayer as we invite God's presence into our hearts and minds together. You love us with open arms, O God. Forgive us when we do not put your love into practice, when we do not challenge the injustice around us, when we are not generous with the gifts we have to share, when we are slow to compassion and quick to judgment, when we contribute to the brokenness of the world instead of helping to make it whole. Forgive us, O oh God, of the ways we fall short. Free us to try again and let your love lead the way. And now let us pray in silence, centering our whole being in God's presence. Friends, please stand. Hear this good news and see the grace of God. You are forgiven. You are free to go and live in the light of love. Thanks be to God. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. Please greet others around you with the peace of Christ or by commenting on the screen at this time. I will seek you in the morning, and 
I will learn to walk in your ways, and step by step you lead me, and I will follow you all of my days. Let us pray. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, illumine the sacred page, we pray that our minds may be open to receive your word, our hearts taught to love it, and our wills strengthened by it. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear now these words from Psalm 116. I will be reading from the Common English Version, Bible Version. I love the Lord because he hears my requests for mercy. I'll call out to him as long as I live because he listens closely to me. Death's ropes bound me. The distress of the grave found me. I came face to face with trouble and grief. So I called on the Lord's name, Lord, please save me. The Lord is merciful and righteous. Our God is compassionate. The Lord protects simple folk. God saves me whenever I am brought down. I tell myself, you can be at peace again because the Lord has been good to you. You, God, have delivered me from death, my eyes from tears, and my foot from stumbling. So I'll walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Here ends this reading. Thanks be to God.
and let their hearts and let their hearts again Thank you, Phil. The Psalms might be the easiest book in the Bible to find. Have you ever tried this, where you've taken the Bible, put your thumb in the middle, open it up, and chances are you will find yourself in the book of Psalms. But the hardest, it is one of the hardest to interpret, mainly because the original language is difficult to translate and because it represents ancient Near Eastern poetry. <laughs> I'm not sure how many of you have tried to interpret poetry recently, but the whole point of the art form is that it is open to interpretation. You aren't supposed to put boxes around it, and even authors are reticent to share exactly what their work means. Poet poets often revel in hearing how their work is interpreted by their readers. And at poetry readings, we'll throw the question back to their readers. What does this poem mean to you? A group of Dungeons and Dragons players were sharing about classes they had taken in school. And one member shared the following story that one of the only classes they dropped was Poetry 101. And that was because the teacher came in on the first day and said, what is harder to write, novels? poems, or short stories. One of the first hands that shot up said novels because they're longer. Fair answer. But then this smarty pants D&D &D player raised his hand and said, oh, well, I think that it's all about expression and it's art. And therefore, you know, it's not about what's harder, but it's about what you bring to it. And so you can put more or less effort into any of these three styles of expression. And as an aside to those around the table, he said, which is the wrong answer, the correct answer is novels because they are longer. <laughs> and he enters back into the story and says, so I gave that answer about like, isn't it about what we bring to it? You know, the total like essay writing answer. And she went wrong. The answer is poems, because they have to rhyme. <laughs> we do love an easy to read rhyming poem, or an acrostic poem where you have the letters in your name and you can write the poetic lines next to it about you. And if you want to write your own acrostic poem during this sermon, please feel free to do so. Our ancient Near Eastern Psalms do not rhyme very much and do not have an acrostic format, but psalmists do have frameworks for us to use as we consider what various psalms might mean for us today. And based on the framework here in 116, we have an individual song of thanksgiving, a poem written after a difficult time of life has been endured, survived, or overcome. We do not have too much information about the specifics of the psalmist's trials, which are largely ignored in these psalms to leave room for lots and lots of praise of God. It may also seem strange that we are using an individual song in our collective life, but it was likely written for this purpose, that the whole congregation could hear what God has done for that individual. The individual bears witness to the group that God has been active and so encourage, encourage us all to hear. And the, for, the form does repeat itself several times over. I, X, because God has Y. That's for you math people out here. It's mostly English today, but math for you out there. And while it doesn't rhyme, it can allow us to enter into the same form of proclamation. It allows us to participate in this way. Why do we love the Lord? What do we owe our God 
God in response for all that God has done for us. From the seminal act of creating us as individual living beings to providing us in our daily life to drawing us into community together. As Luther puts it, I believe that God has made me and all creatures, that he has given me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my limbs, my reason, and all my senses, and still preserves them. In addition thereto, clothing and shoes, meat and drink, house and homestead, wife and children, fields, cattle, and all my goods, that he provides me richly and daily with all that I need to support this body and life, protects me from all danger, and guards me and preserves me from all evil. For all of us, from life to faith, we owe God a song of thanksgiving and the witness to the world of all that God has done for us. And here again, we might ask the question, what might such a song of thanksgiving look like for us? Now, here I go total English teacher. So if that subject causes you to break into hives or feel pain in your body, just keep working on that acrostic poem or draw something beautiful in your bulletin, or please feel free to space out for a little bit, whatever you need to endure this next session. I will be coming back for you. You will be taken back in the end. So Psalm 116 forms a slightly chiastic structure, especially if you include the two verses I did not read, 10 and 11. A chiasm is a literary device in the sequence of ideas presented and then repeated in the reverse order. The result is a mirror effect, and the ideas are reflected back in a passage. Each idea is connected to its reflection by a repeated word, often in a related form. And the term chiasm comes from the Greek word chi, which looks like our letter X. And the chiastic pattern is often called a ring structure as well. And the witness that is at the core, that place where all the pieces intersect, is that God delivers. It's centered at first by two extremes, the experience of a death-like state and the restoration to the land of the living. And second, by the declaration of the psalmist that she loves the Lord because the Lord delivers, and that she kept faith even in troubling times because the Lord delivers. In Psalm 116, with its thanksgiving to God and the witness it bears, is set between two extremes, these two existences between Sheol, the land of the dead, and the land of the living. Sheol is not just a place, the land of the dead where all, no matter their moral standing, where all who have gone to die go in the ancient Israelite understanding of death and life. But it is a state of being here in the psalm. The psalmist feels dead and is lost, forlorn, troubled, while still very much alive. The benefits of God's actions are that the psalmist is delivered from death, this state of being, and restored to a life that really feels like living. Okay, for those English flunkies, come back to me now. I promise we are getting beyond form and talking about meaning. For us, as a faith community, as a church, we are always living between these two extremes, feeling dead and still are very much alive. We, as Christians, hold these two extremes because we believe that there can be life even after death, that there can be resurrection after crucifixion, and we want to rush to get to that moment of salvation. But we cannot ignore that God is always trying to transform us here and now, not in some distant future. And it was happening even during a time when God was not revealing God's self very much. 
And God could feel very distant from the everyday lives of the psalmist in their community. By reading these non-rhyming poems in every iteration, whether thanksgiving or anger or grief, God remains steadfast. And at the center of it all, while everything else around it is changing. God listens to us, and we listen to each other, and place their stories, their testimonies to God on our hearts so that it can be infused with new life and we can be restored to a life that really feels like living. In Philadelphia, my husband Liam and I worked at Broad Street Ministry, now a nonprofit called Broad Street Love. But at the time, Broad Street was a faith community that attempted, not always well, to hold together artists, unhoused people, the marginalized, a wayward seminarian or two, suburbanites, all in one place. And one way we tried to do this was by offering prayer cards for people to fill out. People were brutally honest in their prayers and did not always use church-appropriate language. <laughs> Some were unreadable, some were beyond any comprehensible translation, but we would collect these cards, and then the staff would pray over them, and so would a variety of groups during the week. And in some ways, they had become a modern psalm book for our band of misfits. The prayer cards were taken outside of the building, and one time, a card slipped out from the deck. It was found by a well-known photographer named Zoe Strauss, who was stunned by the honesty. And she actually brought it back to us at Broad Street. One lost prayer card became an opening for a new community partner who wanted to offer a way to engage these prayers in a new way, in a way that provided them the life they deserved. And for a while, we debated about publishing them, and we never really did find the right way. But this story isn't about what we did or did not do with those prayer cards. It was about God listening to us, and us listening to each other, so that we could be restored to a life that really feels like living. It was allowing these prayers to take up space in a world where the authors of those prayers were told they were not allowed to have space. It was allowing these prayers to be listened to by God and by others in ways that they could, know, they could be held no matter the extreme. And so we could be reminded of the charge given to us to transform the world here and now because of the way God listens and shows up for us. Amen. For our hymn of response today, um, we will be singing Open Your Ears, O Faithful People, number 453. Um, this might be new to some of you. Um, so I will go ahead and sing the entire thing all the way through. Um, if you know it, feel free to sing with me. Um, but if not, we will go back and then we'll do verse 1 and 2 after I've uh, done it. And just be aware, halfway through, there's a bit of a kick in tempo. So be ready for it. Open your ears, O oh faithful people, open your ears and hear God's word. Open your hearts, O oh royal priesthood, God has come to you. God has spoken to the people, hallelujah. God has spoken words of wisdom, hallelujah. God has spoken to the people, hallelujah. God has spoken. 
spoken, words of wisdom, hallelujah. Open your ears, O oh faithful people, open your ears and hear God's word. Open your hearts, O oh royal priesthood, God has come to God has spoken to the people, hallelujah. God has spoken words of wisdom, hallelujah. God has spoken to the people, hallelujah. God has spoken words of wisdom, hallelujah. Join me in words adapted from the Confession of 1967. The life, death, resurrection, and promised coming of Jesus Christ has set the pattern for the Church's mission. His human life involves the Church in the common life of all people. His service to men and women commits the Church to work for every form of human well-being. His suffering makes the church sensitive to all human suffering so that it sees the face of Christ in the faces of persons in every kind of need. And so we take all of that human kind of need into our time of prayer with us. We lift up especially uh, for Frank Powers, who is undergoing surgery this week on his shoulder, for Bev Hubbard, who is also undergoing surgery this week. And we pray for the beloved community and family of Mary Kelly, a beloved sister in Christ. And we great, are grateful that pain for her is no more, but we will miss her physical presence with us. So let us pray. Incline your ear to us, O God. Hear us as we voice our hopes, our fears, our fervent dreams before you. We offer our prayers this day for the planet you have entrusted to our care. Forgive us for our lazy stewardship of your creation and call, to, call us to care for our earth as you care for us. Help us change our destructive ways that we may preserve your gift of creation. We offer our prayers this day for people who, the world, who thinks of the world differently than we do. We ask us to live our we ask you ask us to live our lives of faith as people who wrestle with the questions who are you what do we say about Jesus how are we called to live as servants together may we give each other grace when we answer the questions differently may we trust that if we are honestly seeking you we will find you Give us humble hearts as we follow your call. Forgive us when we bless you with our tongues and then with those same tongues curse others who are made in your image. We offer our prayers this day for people we know to be in need of healing 
of wholeness, of peace, of comfort, or of rest. Help us care for each other as you care for us, and to be agents of your grace, consolation, and hope in the broken and wounded places of our world. We lift up before you Frank, Bev, Mary Kelly's family and community, for Beth Bush and Bob Neal, for Charlene Hegdahl. Give us hearts big enough to welcome you, spirits trusting enough to seek you, and minds open enough to recognize you when you draw near to us as we say the words you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As a response to our prayers, we give in grateful thanksgiving for all that God has given us. In the upside-down world of the gospel, we measure our wealth not by what we have, but by what we can give away. So let us give away generously in this offering to bless your church, your people, your creation.
Let us pray. We give thanks for all we have received, O God, gifts of love and time, money and abilities. Into these bowls and into this place, we return a portion of these gifts. Bless those who receive them, just as we are blessed in the act of sharing them. Amen. along with God, so that we may transform this world into a life that is really worth living. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go forth in peace and light. Amen. 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 